This video will walk you through how to use JumpCloud's TCO Calculator tool. The tool is free and available for Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets. You can find links to those as well as an in-depth guide on how to use the calculator in the description. Before you start calculating TCO, it is important to set a goal for the exercise. What are you trying to learn? TCO can help you analyze many different areas of your business. Some of the most common use cases are comparing the costs of current tool set versus a proposed alternative. For example, if you were considering switching from Microsoft Office to Google Workspace, you could calculate the projected TCO of each to see which would cost more money over the next few years. Finding out how much money you've invested in a solution. TCO can help you calculate all the costs that have gone into a certain solution or tool set since you originally acquired it. Assessing the lifetime costs of a tool or asset. This combines past and future costs to show how much something would cost throughout its life. After you decide on a goal, you'll want to come up with a few parameters to help keep this exercise focused. The first parameter is time. What is the time frame you're looking at? If you're calculating future costs, how far into the future do you want to project? If you're looking into the past, are you calculating costs within the last year or since your company acquired the tool set. If you're not sure what time frame to use, we recommend looking at least one year into the past or the future. Five years is a good place to start. You'll also want to determine the scope of the tool or tool set you're evaluating. TCO calculations can be broad enough to include factors such as labor and rollout costs, or narrow enough to just include the immediate tool set. Once you have an idea of what you want to analyze, you can get started with the tool. Open the spreadsheet in whichever format you prefer. I'm going to be doing this walkthrough using Google Sheets, but the processes and views are the same for Excel. The calculator has several sheets or tabs along the bottom. Different sheets are designed for different use cases. Typically, you'll start from the left and move to the right across the sheets as you work. I'll get into the use cases for each sheet in just a moment. For now, we'll stay on the template instruction sheet. On the left-hand side, there are a few fields to fill out. No matter what you want to accomplish with the TCO calculator, you should start by filling in these fields because the calculator will use these values in its formulas. You'll see that I have already filled these out. They represent a made-up company for the purpose of this demonstration. You'll see example figures throughout this demonstration so you can get a better idea of how the calculator works once it's filled out. There are three option fields. These are important. They represent the tool or tool set for which you'll want to calculate TCO. Make sure that you label each option you plan to analyze so that you can keep track of them as you move through the different sheets. If you're comparing a current solution with alternatives, make your current solution option one. If you're not doing any comparison, you can fill out option one and skip options two and three. Some figures to pay attention to are the growth factor, the inflation rate, and the assessment timeframe. The growth factor is how much your company plans to grow. If it plans to stay the same size, you can leave it as one. If your plan is to double the size of the company and the time frame you're measuring, you would enter two, and so on. This can dramatically affect calculations, so we recommend using this variable according to your company's growth projections. The formulas sheet in the bottom right can help you figure out your growth factor if you're not sure how to do that. The inflation rate is another important number. If you're calculating future TCO, you might want to take that inflation rate into account. The number here is a historical average, but feel free to change it if you want to get closer to the current market. The assessment time frame is how far into the future you're projecting. This is a number in years. Three to five is a solid number of years to start with. On the right-hand side of this sheet, there are some brief instructions and some quick navigation buttons to help you quickly jump to different sheets. The next sheet, labeled option one, is where you start to input costs associated with the tool or tool set you're measuring. Along the top of this sheet are a few cells that you won't need to touch. The first cell, A1, 
is the name that you input in option one. The next cell is going to be the aggregate TCO. The calculator will do this calculation for you automatically. There's also a note here to remember that you should only fill in the shaded cells. Any white cells have formulas in them that will do automatic calculations. Now for the bulk of the sheet. Typically, analyzing the TCO of something requires you to break it down into measurable parts. For example, if I wanted to assess the TCO of my company's Active Directory instance, I would need to break that into a few items, such as servers, the co-location center costs, the licensing costs, etc. The components that make up IT assets usually fall into the six categories we have here. Infrastructure equipment, data center hosting costs, software and applications, employee devices and hardware, personnel and support, and rollout costs. Now is the part when you start listing out your expenses. List each item under its respective category. You can further categorize items by using the pop-up menu in the left-hand column. The next grouping we have, cost per unit and quantity, apply to things you purchased, such as a server. The next grouping for past year to date applies to calculations where you want to know how much you've already spent on something. To the right, future projections are broken up into recurring costs and ad hoc costs. Recurring costs would apply to something like your co-location center payment. An ad hoc addition would be something like a server upgrade that you anticipate might happen three years from now. End of life costs are associated with offboarding and switching over the items. End of life gains are associated with any costs you might make up when you offboard the item. Like if you plan to sell an employee's old laptop. You'll go through the same exercise for option two and option three. After you've filled out the sheets for each option you want to compare, you can get into the analysis. This is where you'll get to use your executive dashboards. There are three executive dashboards, a lifetime dashboard, a projected TCO dashboard, and a current solutions dashboard. The lifetime dashboard pulls all the data for both past and future TCO. The projected TCO dashboard pulls in all the future calculations. This one is great for comparing the costs of solutions you're currently considering. The current dashboard uses past calculations to show you how much you've spent on a current solution. Each executive dashboard has comparisons, breakdowns, and charts to help you visualize the data. These are designed to work well in presentations and proposals. You can copy paste or screenshot the ones you want to use. Finally, there's the formulas sheet. These are quick calculators for different numbers you might encounter in the tool, like calculating growth factor or labor costs. If you want to get more in depth into using this calculator, check out the free ebook linked in the description. You can also take a look at this example spreadsheet, which is linked in the description as well.